Taking a ride across the bridges spread over the islands of Lagos, you might wonder about the dwellings below, built and sitting on logs dug deep into the waters. Who are these dwellers and what do they do? Is it the choice to live on water? How do they cope with living so closely to the elements of nature around the seas? And how enduring and durable are the logs in which stand on the weight of its dwellers on water? These is life on water. Away from the traffic, noise, air pollution, the density synonymous with the mainlands are the calm, cool and ease of a zero traffic system you would find only on water. Some of the inhabitants of these water environs are the Eguns and the Ilajes. The Eguns are migrants from Badagria while the Ilajes are from Undo State. They are fishermen who find their shelter where the fishes supposedly live. The two groups spread across the waters and shores of Lagos. However, our focus is on Makoko. As fishermen, the dig mangroves in the shallow waters, as well as use baskets to trap and catch fish. They come from true Badagri, they come to this place. We call them Egu. You know, but they are not they are not Badagri people. They are they are not they are, they are from uh, maybe uh, Benin Republic. They are not Nigerians. You know, there are Ondo people there, there are Ilaja, which is Nigerian, so the Ilaja is from Ondo. I'm from Ondo state, in you know, Oklahoma local government. Chief, Chief Bale, Chairman D. Emmanuel, Adubo, water site. The build and live in log houses dug into water while they carry out the trades within their vicinity, selling their catch to their surrounding neighborhood and the larger market. They also do small business transactions on boat sales and kiosks on water. They have schools, hospitals and churches, all built on water, as well as patronized similar institutions in the neighborhood mainland. They drink and cook from borehole water and do not completely rely on public power supply for electricity, but all the natural sources of light from the sun, moon and the stars, as well as the cool breeze from the wind. For these rare people, it is easy to calculate the mood of the sea to guide against possible waves. But then, considering the high tides and harsh weather, how do they cope with living on the lagoon? And how enduring and durable are the logs in withstanding the weight of its dwellers? Now, these uh, logs of wood that they use for the building of the houses, they get that from mangrove, the mangrove uh, plant. And the mangrove plant is known to be very hardy. And in fact, it has a number of qualities that uh, enables it to survive in water for a very long time without uh, undergoing degradation. In terms of uh, safety, well, one consideration that these people, you know, they have a lot of traditional knowledge in uh, trying to size some of these houses. One, you have to look for areas that are not very heavily flooded 
they have ideas about the tidal levels within those areas such that even when you have very high tides their houses will not still be flooded they also try to look at the backwaters you know within the waterfronts you have areas where you have very high activity in terms of wave action they try to go to the backwaters where the water is a little more still such that when you have very serious wave action such houses are not uh, affected but be that as it may that doesn't really mean that uh, such houses are 100 percent safe just like any other building you have in other areas but for the purposes for which they are intended to serve they are relatively safe <laughs> sea level rise due to the effect of uh, global warming over time. So such houses too are also going to be faced with uh, the problem of inundation during such exceptionally high tides. Essentially, you have the problem of wave action, the problem of tide, the problem of surges. But again, materials made of wood, if you're also thinking of safety, fire is a very big problem. So in case you also have fire, the, those houses can easily be ravaged. Um, for Monday, we shall call we were for me for Monday. The bad yak by me, the yak by me, I dig ye by. Oh, Mongaga be a moy. Why you go bosom? Toba bosom, why you go lolle? I lolle. Oh, I am be. Toba lolle, I don't fool. I don't want to call dear, dear, dear. I caught on to my debate, dear, dear. I want not to bless you call. I be a man to buy yak more, don't want no me. The innocent chuckle, the relaxed posture, and the cheerful disposition of the occupants of Makoko depict contentment in living close to nature and workplace. Is he really the choice of these people to live on water? I was born at this Lagos State, at Lagos State uh, Maternity, Island Maternity Hospital. I was born here. I stay here, school here, working here. Mari eh, I choose Maoko actually because Maoko is very peaceful place. We are fish we are fishing here. Selling crab, fish and crayfish. So Maoko Ishewa. Loja Ishao me. I'm on Peja. So me one in Baragri, you be that you are who are so keju. Oh me wa oh you be doing me wa oh gino. I ba me by only a jaju on law. Got off for Baba and Baba and Bidi. Hundred and two that you want be. I'm not going to Communal living is so distinct among the Makakos. They cooperate to develop the area by themselves. Sand filling and building required structures on these areas and on water. With support from the Lagos State Government and the World Bank, they have been able to put together a special school bathrooms and toilets, lock-up shops and cold rooms, as well as a standby generator for their well-being and growth. For all of these, they're indeed grateful. He's a nice guy that we like him, we love him. Even though we have a uh, French school there, we have English school. Oh, you both come and do school for us there. We are praising him. We are praising him. We are even thanking him because since governor has been uh, on top of uh, governor has been this Lagos state we have never seen the type of governor he is before aside the refreshing impact of living on water makoko is unfortunately a far cry from a good life government is not good at all for any woman being and to bati lo si makoko yen how much pay they are really suffering pe ko ko ti eye rara ni ko yi a woman being ko ma gbe lori omi nbe yen ibe no toilet si ibe no school or do school wa nbe o but mi mo ba o ni the school list but ke yan ma gbe ni bi kon 
Kotu Mari toilet to low. It's very bad. But I pity those people that live by the water, eat by the water, no care. And when you go there, you see what we are talking about. Myself, I wouldn't like to live there. And I wouldn't like government to just push them away there without alternative. Apart from this dirty place, because the place is damp packed, you can see the way they, they, they build the house. It's very, it's very, 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 very close to each other. If, there's a, if there should be a, a, a fire outbreak there, a, 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 many lives will, will be lost. And another thing is, hoodlums are very much there. Hoodlums, touts, thugs, rogues, they live there, they hide there. You, can, you see, young mothers, very, very young mothers, you know, young girls that, that give birth to, to ladies, to, to, to babies, they, they spring up there very well. The logs on which these stilt houses are built form aggregating surfaces for most of the benthic organisms that which fish feeds on. And so at times, it also ensures that you now have schools of fish coming around that area. Aside from those uh, surfaces where these uh, benthic organisms uh, settle on, the food wastes that are coming from humans are also very attractive to the fish. In that regard, it has its own beneficial impact. But naturally, when you also have man living directly on top of water, you definitely know that uh, he's going to impact on the environment himself by way of uh, the excretory wastes that are going into the water, which oftentimes is based on the fact that uh, the tidal movements can wash away some of these uh, excretory wastes. But we do know that it's not always that the tide is very high because you also remember that I did point out that most of these houses are built at the backwaters where the tidal action is very slow. At the end of the day, you are now beginning to introduce some pathogens that are associated with uh, human um, um, excreta. Again, from the health point of view, you know, um, most of these people also try to take their bath in these surrounding waters. And you know the, the problems that comes with zoonotic diseases. And at the end of the day, you can pick up some waterborne diseases such as salmonella. And we keep talking about uh, typhoid all the time. These are pathways through which uh, you pick up some of these uh, pathogenic organisms from the highly polluted water. Now, these days, one other problem we are beginning to have is the problem of pollution. Take, for instance, in Lagos here, the Lagos Lagoon. Uh, it literally serves as a recipient for most of the industrial and human waste you have in Lagos State. Uh, most of the industries in Lagos State empty their effluents into through one canal or whatever, and the eventual uh, recipient of this is the Lagos Lagoon. Um, several studies have been done in the past to quantify the levels of these uh, pollutants, uh, mainly heavy metals. A lot of work has been done in the area of uh, quantifying the level of heavy metals in our waters. Uh, luckily, it is still not above the permissible limits. But concerns are that over time, these heavy metals will also begin to bioaccumulate along the food chain. And uh, this can call for serious concern, you know, when some of the organisms begin to bioaccumulate them, and then you now have incidences of biomagnification along the food chain. So those are uh, real problems that are there. Well, as for PCBs these days, some work is also still being done. And you know, these are carcinogenic uh, substances. And aside from that, you have the problems of uh, oil pollution. You may say that Lagos State is not an oil producing state, for instance. But we have various forms of uh, spent lubricant oil coming from the crank cases of most generating sets, various types of cars, the moldways, the bolecajas. They all end up in gutters. And these gutters end up in the stormwater drainage channels that eventually empty into the Lagos Lagoon 
that forms the area where you have most of these uh, inhabitants building these uh, uh, stilt houses. Much as they enjoy living around the waters for the convenience of work and the benefits of nature, the Makoko will still crave for a better standard of living. In. And just as they appreciate the Lagos state government's efforts in beautifying the state, there is a fair the Makoko has been earmarked for demolition and the ongoing development process. But we are hearing rumors that government is going to demolish Makoko. But now, we want government. We are we, we are begging government not to demolish Mako. I don't know what to carry us down to. What do you want to what do you want us to do there? We cannot from that place come here to come and fish fisher. Please, we are begging for Governor Fashola. We are enjoying here. And if you carry us away from this area, it will affect our children's school. We want Governor Faraj Fashola to help us at Maoko, not to demolish Maoko, to help us to develop Maoko in a fine way so that we at Maoko, we will enjoy. It's true that we are living on top of water. It's on top of that water, we are living it. We are living there. We are suffering, but it's because we love fish. And it's our work. We can't leave our work and go to another place. Conscious for us in the bank, and we both try. Keep your banner conscious, you leave for us. Conde, if you will, you are. Be be as you are going to see what you tell along. Watch it, Tolati for us. Go watch it, you are also. You are also. Oh, watch it for us. Oh, I'm be oh, just private, private, private. Go see the job. Okay. Bo <laughs> I want I'm not about life, life jacket. Let government come inside. They will make a lot of money. Look at here. You just a canoe. Look at there. When they come, they do a ferry to us. This place is far. You can take this place to Pedro, to Iwaya, to anywhere. When government, to Unilac, when government come here and renovate all this place, they can put a ferry, they can make a money, a lot of money to develop Lagos. And we are paying tax. We people, we are painters because we support our governor. So it did a lot to Lagos State because I will say that since I was born and now I haven't seen a governor like him. The Makakos pride themselves in their resourcefulness within their immediate environment. Without Marco, especially Marco, without Marco, without this Marco, without Ashiji Rimaka, there is no fresh fish in Lagos State. The development anywhere is welcome, and it is the prayer of the citizens that their elected leaders live up to their promises. But when the process of development begins to cause casualties, the noticeable victims are the very poor. I don't see the reason why government should be throwing people out without alternative. I throw people out. Development is good. I like it. But in a, in a normal sense, people should be relocated in a better place, whereby you feel that the, place, the present place is not good. 
they want to do something about it, they want to improve their life, re relocate them, they have the chance to do whatever they want to do. So you want to see a better place. So you want to see a better place. So you want to see a better place. The development is good for everybody. Because they, are not, because they are not developed, they are not civilized. Those people, if you watch them very well, their children doesn't go to school. I know them very well. Their children, I was born here. They take up to their, the deserve of their, of their parents. You see them, on, on, go up to the Kule bus every day. They, they used to bring their, 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 their fish, their wires to the market, come, they come to, to the bus on a daily basis. You see their young ones following them. They don't go to school. And so they, they, have to be, they have to be enlightened. You know, people have to talk to them and let them know that it's not good. You know, we are in Lagos. This is, a, this is a civilized world. We too, we want to look like uh, Aja people. We want to look like uh, v, uh, Victoria Island. We want to proud of him. So we don't want him to demolish Wako. We want him to develop Wako for us and help people that live in on top of water. Although the Makakos crave for a better standard of living as found in other parts of the city, they worry that their lot won't be the same as happened in Morocco 19 years ago. Wow. If you come and carry us away from here, where did you want us to go? And what did you want us to eat? How are we going to work? How are we going to take care of our children? 